Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and for today's video, I will be showing you how we image our computers at work. So this has been requested on the channel and I think it's also a good idea to share to those people who have not done imaging at work yet or those people who are getting started in IT on how imaging works and looks like. So in today's video, I will be showing you different ways on how we image computers and the basics of imaging. So if you're interested in today's video, please keep on watching and without further ado, let's get started. So computer imaging is simply the process of installing an operating system, applications, and settings onto a device. So there's different ways on imaging computers and I'm going to show you how we do it at work. First one is through the Pixie server and the second one is through the USB drive. So the process for a Pixie server is pretty simple depending on how Pixie is set up on your environment. The only thing you're going to need is a network connection and make sure that you're on the correct VLAN on the port that you're connecting to. And it's the most efficient way in imaging because all you need is the network. So most of the time, imaging is done through the Pixie server because it's more efficient, especially if we are doing mass imaging for a lot of devices, a couple of devices. So before I show you how to image through Pixie, I'm going to show you first how Pixie works. But first, let's talk about what Pixie is and it stands for Preboot Execution Environment and it's a tool for deploying disk images over a network. Okay, so this is how Pixie works. First, the client machine is set to boot from the network. When it starts up, it sends out a DHCP request over the network seeking for an IP address. Then, the DHCP server responds with an IP address and additional information including the location of the Pixie boot server. Using the information from the DHCP server, the client then establishes a connection with the TFTP server and requests the boot file. Then, the TFTP server sends the boot file to the client machine, which is loaded into the client's memory. Then, once it's loaded into the client's memory, we can now start the process for our imaging or the OS installation. So, the first step is to connect the target computers to the network. For example, I'm going to image this computer here. So I'm going to make sure that I do have a network connection. So I'm just connecting an Ethernet cable here. And make sure that you're in the correct VLAN that can reach the Pixie server. So for the second step, this is selecting the boot menu during startup. So once you powered on the machine, go to the BIOS setting. This usually depends on the machine. And for HP and Lenovo, you have to press the F12 button. The key in here is to make sure that you are going through the network boot. For example, for this Lenovo X1 Carbon laptop, F1 is used to enter the BIOS setup. So it's different for every make and model of the computer. Once you've entered the BIOS setting, go to the Startup tab. And under the network boot, make sure that the LAN is selected in here. And once your boot menu is all set for network boot, when you exit the BIOS, you should see that it should enter the network boot now. After that, this also depends on how your Pixie is set up, but just select that you want to connect to the network. And usually, we just wait for the Pixie image to load to our computer and then follow the process we have for our company. Sometimes it takes a while to load all of the image to our computer before we get started with the process, but that's normal because it's over the network. So once everything is loaded, we typically have to enter a password to get started with the installation. It's important to have a password to prevent a non-admin from imaging their own computer, for example, if they're trying to mess up with the BIOS. And then next step would be selecting the appropriate image for the respective machine. For example, we typically have different images for different types of computers. We have an image for our edit computers, which has all of the Adobe applications. For the regular users, they just have the standard applications without the Adobe. So the next step would depend on your company if you do this during the imaging process, but we put the host name during the imaging process and also the description on Active Directory just in case we forget after it's done imaging. Once you're done with all of the process, the next step is just to wait until the image is completed. There are times that we have to image computers through USB drive. And that's if the Pixie server is down, for example, or, or offline, or 
there's something with the pixie server that you can't reach it so another way to image is through a usb drive which is a more manual way but it's an option especially if the pixie server is not available or sometimes we use the usb drive method if we are just imaging a generic computer we don't have to use the custom image that we prepare for work or if we have a special really special image that we are just going to use for one computer or very few computer then we can use usb method so the first step when imaging through a flash drive is to create a bootable USB drive. So when creating a bootable USB drive, this also depends on the system that your company is using. We typically go to the software library and then create a bootable media. Then of course select bootable media from the options and then click on next and then it will take you to a window where it's going to ask you to choose the removable drive or your USB drive. And then the next window is going to ask you if you want to protect the media with a password. This is a must so we can prevent accidental imaging. And this is also where you can set the expiration for this bootable media. We typically just set it up for a year to expire. And the next window is just filling up your settings for the boot image and the distribution point. Then you just have to wait for the system to finish creating the bootable media. So the next step once the bootable media was created is to insert the USB drive onto the computer that you want to image. And then you can press the appropriate function buttons to change the boot order to select booting from USB. You can check online on the correct button for the make and model of the computer you are imaging. You can also change the boot order on the BIOS itself. Once you're in the BIOS settings, look for the boot order option and then change the first boot order to USB. Then you can exit the BIOS and make sure to save the changes. Then the computer is going to reboot and it should load the image and you can start with the installation process now. Okay, so thank you so much for watching today's video. If you have any comments regarding today's video that I might have missed covering, please leave it in the comment section down below. And if you have any questions, please leave a comment down below and we will try our best to answer all of them. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you guys in the next one. Not okay, all I want and I pray All I need are some better days Fuck me, I'm looking in the mirror So foggy, but I've never seen clearer I don't really think anyone can save me And honestly, I'm not really sure I want saving I like to be my own worst enemy There's no